Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another Star Wars action figure review. Today we are shifting scales a little bit and we're taking a look at some figures from the 3 and 3 quarter inch vintage collection. Uh, my last few reviews have focused on the Black series so I thought this would be a nice change of pace for the next few videos. At least until a lot of my Black series pre-orders with Star Action figures are fulfilled and I've got more uh, recent releases to give you a look at. Uh, in today's review, I wanted to give you a look at a figure, once again, from the Vintage Collection. This figure comes to us from Rogue One, and it is the Imperial Assault Tank Driver. Now, this is a slightly older figure. This was probably one of the first figures to be released when the Vintage Collection uh, received a, a resurrection in around 2018. This figure was part of the second wave of the new collection. It's a really, really cool figure though, and it's one that I've had in the collection for quite some time. Just never got around to reviewing it, so I thought, what better time than now to do it? So, before we get into the figure itself, as always, let's take a look at the packaging he comes in. So we do get, as always, that standard vintage card back, which looks absolutely fantastic. You've got a really nice image of the tank drivers on the side of the box there, with the Rogue One logo across the top. A little bit perplexing as to why they decided to highlight the tank commander on this card back, considering the fact that the tank driver that we actually get is the standard pilot, it's not the commander with the, the grey stripes on the armour. Um, this figure would be released later on in the Vintage Collection, I've yet to pick it up, uh, but as and when I do, I will of course be sure to review it for you. On the reverse side of the box, you've got some other figures available in the Vintage Collection and we will be taking a look at some of these in future reviews. So we've got Han Solo, Enfys Nest, the Tank Driver, the Imperial Death Trooper from Rogue One as well, Snoke and the First Order Stormtrooper. We will be looking at Han Solo and Enfys Nest in future videos as well as some other characters from Solo. So pretty standard stuff in terms of packaging and then obviously you've got the Kenner logo down in the bottom corner. One of the things that I didn't really like about the uh, return of the vintage collection um, at first was the fact that the bubbles that housed the figures were a lot wider than before. This is thankfully something that Hasbro went back and revisited and now we get narrower bubbles for narrower figures. Obviously figures such as the Gamorrean Guard and what have you have to be a little bit wider. Um, but for standard figures this became sort of the new set standard bubble size and it just took a lot away from the image in my opinion. But it's nice to know that they went back and changed that around. So there we go. That is the packaging for the Vintage Collection Imperial Assault Tank Driver. Now let's take a look at the figure itself, and here he is. Really, really nice figure. Um, the tank drivers were one of my favourite trooper designs to come out of Rogue One. Um, there were some fantastic troopers introduced in that movie, from the Death Troopers to the Shore Troopers, amongst others. Um, but this guy definitely stands out. I really do like the design. It's It's got that simplistic feel of the First Order, with that minimal sort of aesthetic. But at the same time, it feels... Uh, worn, it feels used, and it feels part of that that used universe that we came to expect from the original trilogy. So I do really, really like this design. It does look very nice. Um, when this figure was first released, a lot of collectors did wonder what the differences would be between this particular figure and the figure released in the Jedi Revolt 4-pack, which, if you remember, was released in the 5 POA line and featured Saw Gerrera, um, Edrio Two Tubes, Jin Erso and an Imperial Tank Driver. Now obviously the previous release of this figure was a 5POA figure so it was very limited in terms of its articulation so you know the vintage collection version has posability going for it but in terms of deco and overall aesthetic um, this figure is far superior in my opinion there's a lot more weathering on it and um, the details are a lot more fine-tuned and it's just, in my opinion, a much better looking figure. For the sake of comparison, I do have the 5POA version to hand, and here he is. Um, in terms of colour, in terms of details, it's similar. You know, there are very, very few differences. But you will notice that, you know, there's elements there on the back of the figure that are more detailed on the vintage release. And uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot more weathering and a lot more dirt and paint applications going on with the vintage version. The only thing I wasn't a really big fan of with the vintage release was the fact that he didn't come with this really cool weapon that was included with the Jedi Revolt 
tank driver. This is of course the blaster that we see with the shore troopers. And it's just a really interesting weapon to look at. Really nicely weathered, really nicely sculpted. Um, but with the standard vintage collection release, we just get the uh, the Rogue One style E11 blaster rifle, which as you can see features the flashlight or the scope on the side of the barrel. But as I said, in terms of sculpt, absolutely top notch. Articulation, ticks all the boxes, and I really do like the weathering on this figure. Now in terms of articulation, this guy does feature a ball joint at the head. Nice, decent range of movement there. We've got hinges at the shoulders. Thankfully, the shoulder pla uh, pads don't hinder the articulation too much. You can get them reasonably high up. We have hinges at the elbows, hinges at the wrists, a ball joint at the torso, hinges at the hips, swivels at the upper thighs, hinges in the knees, and hinges at the ankles. So really great articulation for a three and three quarter inch figure. And uh, if you did end up buying the Imperial hover tank, then this is the perfect figure to pilot that vehicle. But it just looks really good. Again, love the sculpt, love the design of the trooper, and the weathering and the paint applications that Hasbro have applied to this one are very, very nice indeed. Now, if you're looking for a cheap army builder, obviously the vintage collection figures will run you up a little bit more than the five POA figures did back in the day. Uh, but if you can find any of these guys loose on eBay, then I'd recommend picking them up. They make for nice background filler. And again, if you're wanting just a couple of cheap figures to throw in your hover tank, then this figure does nicely. But if articulation and detail is your thing, then naturally the vintage collection is the way to go. As has always been the case. So really, really cool figure. I love that helmet design as well. Really cool looking indeed. Just an all-round great trooper. So if you can get this, your hands on this figure, highly recommend that you do so. He's a, a great complement to the Imperial Tank Commander. And I'll be back with some more Vintage Collection reviews very soon. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and until my next video, as always guys, thank you for watching, keep collecting, and may the force be with you.